Hey Arthurs, Nikki here, and this is bittersweet because this is our last Expanse adventure together. So today I'll be reviewing the novella, The Sins of Our Fathers, which takes place after Leviathan Falls. So join me around the blue light readers for this episode of I Will Sins. The Sins of Our Fathers was published in 2022 as part of Memories Legion. And the nice thing about Sins of Our Fathers is we get a couple of loose ends tied up from Babylon's ashes. So we get to find out what became of Philip and Neros Nagata. So that's Naomi and Marco's son. And also what happened to Nami Volovodov. So that's Anna's and Nono's daughter. Okay, just a warning here, I have a series spoiler coming up, so earmuff if you don't wanna know. In the end of Leviathan Falls, as you could probably guess since it's called Leviathan Falls, the ring gates closed. So wherever people were at that moment, that is where they were going to be. And so when the ring gates closed, Philip was doing contract work on the beta settlement of the planet Jana. Okay, so unfortunately, far from soul system. In this novella, we learn what happened to Philip after the events of Babylon's ashes. And remember, Philip had an extraordinary youth as the son of Marcos and Eros. Marcos was that charismatic and really narcissistic leader of the free navy. And ultimately, Marcos ends up being devoured by the dark gods when he crosses through the ring gates. And remember that Philip was not on board that ship. And so Philip got out, Philip lived. Philip did some shady things himself. He did some very bad things. Remember he sent those camouflaged asteroids, he was the head of the team that did that, to Earth that ended up killing like two billion people. He also was responsible for the attacks on Callisto. And after Babylon's ashes, Philip moved around a lot and sometimes he changed his name and he never ended up staying in the same place for very long. He even started families and abandoned them. So it's still super icky behavior because he was constantly paranoid that someone would discover who he really was. Now with the ring gates closed, we're back to the basics of humanity with this beta settlement. Like they don't have a lot of resources, okay? They have this small and vulnerable population. We've returned back to the essentials of humanity where calories are currency and there's these big, scary migrating monsters that are threatening their settlement. So basically they're just really big creatures that when because the settlement is in their migratory path, when they walk through it, they just wipe everything out. And the other loose thread that we end up tying up with this novella is learning what became of Nami. And Nami and Anna, actually, I don't know about Nono, but it seems like Anna definitely made her way into this beta settlement. So Nami channeling Anna really serves as mediator in a lot of circumstances. I think she has a lot of the similar personality traits, a lot of those same qualities. And something that I didn't totally buy with this, I know it's nice to like tie everything together with a neat little bow, but like, it just seems like the world is too small. Like how did Philip and Nami both end up on this same settlement, on the same planet, even in the same system, there's over 1300 ring gates leading to different habitable systems. The kind of cool piece of dramatic irony that exists between Philip and Nami is Nami doesn't know who Philip really is. And Nami was on earth in Nigeria with her mothers when the asteroids hit. And one of her mothers, I remember, did get injured by the asteroids. She hurt her leg. And I can't remember now if that was uh, Anna or Nono who that happened to. The importance of this novella and the whole Expanse 
storyline is just to show that life carried on after the ring gates closed. The sad part is the expiration dates on these different settlements are going to differ significantly and substantially. Like if you ended up in soul system on earth, well, earth has resources. I think hopefully um, it has a good number of resources because we know it was becoming overpopulated. But something like this beta settlement on Jana, they don't even have like food that they can harvest or grow really that's edible on that planet. So they're going to have to figure all that out. Meanwhile, the local fauna is just huge and very dangerous to humans. So uh, I'm thinking that the expiration date is going to be pretty soon, sadly, on beta. But who knows? Meanwhile, the beta settlers are trying to figure out how to protect themselves from the monsters. So they're debating amongst themselves like whether they should stay in the settlement that they've pieced together and fortify or take it apart and move to a different location out of the migratory path of the monsters. And the thing is, there is this person in town who is charismatic and kind of knows best, or he thinks he knows best, and he's very good at getting what he wants. And he, he really reminds Philip of Philip's father, Marco. That starts to bother Philip immensely. And Philip worries about this guy, Jandro, who I have just described, attempting to take control. So once again, we get this theme of the recycling of history. And we first heard about this theme at the end of Babylon's Ashes from Nami because she was studying it in her history class. So in a conversation with her mother, Anna, she asks, is the important thing about history the people who actually did things? Or if they hadn't been alive, would the same basic things have happened just with other people doing them, like with math? that two different people came up with calculus right at the same time. So maybe everything's like that. Maybe it doesn't matter who leads a war because the things that made that war happen weren't leaders. They were how much money people had or how good their land was for making food or something. That is what we're seeing here. And that's why we have the title, The Sins of Our Fathers. And remaining in that vein, Ultimately, the dynamic between Nami and Philip mirrors that of Anna and Naomi in Abaddon's gate. So we're even recycling that relationship dynamic. Unfortunately, this wasn't one of my favorite novellas. I was happy to learn what happened to Philip. And it's so sad uh, to learn that Naomi's never going to see Philip again and that she actually never ended up finding out that he survived, which I, I guess just that is how life goes sometimes. Uh, oh, but one more thing. I think there was another uh, familiar character in the novella and I saw the name Merton and I didn't catch the first name, uh, but it was a male character. So I'm guessing it was probably the youngest son uh, of the Mertons from Sibylla Byrne. If you remember, the Mertons also had another son, uh, Katoa, in Caliban's war. And remember, he underwent that protomolecule uh, controlled experiment. So it was nice to stay a little longer in the Expanse world because I was craving more Expanse when I finished Leviathan Falls. So I was just like, what do I do next? Uh, this didn't quite scratch that itch, but I'm officially done with The Expanse now and I need to move on. So next up on the TBR is Jordan and I are going to review a book together and we are going to review Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. He's teaching it at school right now. It's a reread for me and I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, so please tune in for that. and to follow what's going on with us. Check us out on Goodreads, subscribe to this channel, and I will see you next time. Bye.